tune-ups. To some men, the oceans of the world are the main streams of life. Recreation, a method of travel, and a fantastic source of food. For many years now, the scientists of the world have realized that our future generations must be fed the byproducts of the seas in order to survive. And so the search continues. During such a search, the crew of the mighty Argonaut makes an interesting discovery. This is amazing. Captain, what do you make of this thing? Well, that's hard to say. Let's hold the magnifying glass a little higher, Ronnie. It looks like a tadpole. And yet, my eyes tell me that it's a wave. <laughs> I've heard of pygmy whales before, but this is ridiculous. Oh, this isn't a pygmy. It has to be a mutation of some sort. Why do you say that, Captain? Well, during earlier atomic experiments, some of the islands in these parts were infested with radioactivity. This caused a lot of weird developments among the local species of animal and plant life. And this whale here could be one example. Where'd we get this specimen, Ronnie? Uh, about a hundred miles back, sir. Here, Bass Oil Soil Field, Skipper. We're less than a mile out. You know the one. It's deserted now. Yeah. Then I'd suggest we head back that way. If there's radioactivity in that area, we ought to alert basalt to the danger. Okay? All hands, man your stations. Let's get this boat underway. Aye, Skipper! As the huge Argonaut gets underway, little do her crew realize the adventure that awaits them. Perhaps the most dangerous and exciting episode of their lives. At Sam Basalt's deserted oil field, two mysterious scuba divers make their way to the surface of the sea. They carry a small concealed tank between them. And floating above the oil field... They come, comrade, Captain. Ah, I can see them, comrade. Get below. Open the tank. At once, comrade. Our mission is again a success. <laughs> Meanwhile, 50 feet below the surface, the two mysterious divers enter the bottom of the trawler. Tight, comrade. Don't be a fool, Nikolai. Have we failed yet? I'd be sorry, comrade. Here. I'd be giving you a helping hand. And aboard the Argonaut, just a few miles away, Captain Fathom says... Oil field, Miss Perkins. Three miles dead ahead, Captain. Half speed, Ronnie. Half speed, sir. Activate aqua viewer. Activated. Hmm. Uh, she's still deserted. Almost like a ghost town. Hold it. What's that? Scuba divers. Perkins, get a fix on them. I want to know where they go. Yes, Captain. Scavengers, Skipper? No, they don't have the proper equipment. One third speed, Ronnie. One third speed. Uh, red light support, sir. I can see it too. It's blinking. Uh oh. Those divers are going into that small shack. Ease up, Ronnie. Bring her closer to the shack. Hi, sir. Hey, look at that. Stand by to blow all tanks. Emergency. Too late. The ultrasonic ray has paralyzed the Argonauts' crew. They've been captured by that monster of the sea, King Neptunus. <laughs> Prepare for miniaturization. Yes, Highness. You should destroy them, King Neptunus. Why do you play games with our lives at stake? You have captured Captain Fathom. You disagree with my methods, Comrade Sophie? But the danger. If one of them should escape... And who would listen to a minnow, my pet? Do not alarm yourself. I shall take care of them. They are secured, Your Highness. Good. Now come, Comrade Sophie. Again, you may witness the miracle of the shrinking lights. <laughs> he is mad. Entirely mad. Fathom is clever. He will make trouble. Please, Comrade. Don't anger him. It is too dangerous. And aboard the helpless Argonaut, Captain Fathom is the first to recover. Blast it. For a moment there, I, I thought we'd... Are you all right, Skipper? Uh, uh, how are Liz and Ronnie? Oh, my head. I feel so strange. What happened, Captain? I don't know. Shockwave of some sort. Okay, Ronnie? Frankly, I'd feel better if I wasn't looking at the end of the world. Well, the Argonaut and her crew are about to undergo the miracle of the shrinking lights. What will happen now? 